in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning to every one of you. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we observe the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us begin this worship time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we once again come to you and thank you for enabling us to gather together in our homes and look to you through this worship time. Oh Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you have showered upon us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for experiencing your blessing along with our family members. O oh Lord, continue to be with us and uphold us. Yes, even though the situation looks grim in this whole world, O oh Lord, you have been with us all these days, guiding us, protecting us, and helping us to glorify your holy name by leading a witness for life. Lord, be present in our midst and bless this worship time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us glorify the Lord by singing the opening hymn. Dearly beloved, let us once again look to the Lord in prayer. First, let us offer the collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church, and because it cannot continue in safety without thy succor, Preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to pray. We thank you, O God, for the new grace you have promised for us for each day. It's not only new, but also sufficient, O Lord. Your mercies Abide forever. Your compassions fail not. We rejoice that Jesus with us is the same yesterday, today and forever. We are encouraged to know that he keeps interceding for us at your right hand, sympathizing with our weaknesses. Father God, we feel miserable whenever we fail in fighting the temptations, too often we tend to give up. Help us, O oh God, to remember that your hand will always stretch out to lift us up. We pray that your Holy Spirit 
would remind us of your promises of victory. Help us turn a deaf ear to the devil who keeps whispering to us that we would never make it. You are not only our Alpha, but also our Omega. You are not only the author of our faith, but also its finisher. You are the first and the last, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. You alone know the end from the beginning in all that concerns us. O oh God, our divine sculptor, help us yield ourselves to you without any reservation, even though the chiseling may be painful. We praise you because you who have begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We step into this day with this confidence. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord who goes before us as the captain of our salvation. Amen. 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 Now we shall hear the epistle portion for this day. The epistle for the 16th Sunday after Trinity is taken from Paul's letter to the, to the Ephesians, chapter 3, reading from verse 13. Ephesians, chapter 3, reading from the 13th verse. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that you ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever Amen. Here ends the reading of the epistle. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, chapter 7, verses beginning from 11 onwards. Soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near, the, near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who, who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her do not weep then he came up and touched the bier and the bearers stood still and he said young man I say to you arise and the dead man sat up and began to speak 
and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. Here ends the gospel portion. Praise be unto you, O Christ. Let us once again glorify the Lord by singing another hymn. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, once again I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in this worship time. I know it's not only the members of St. Matthias' Church, I know many other uh, people, members of other churches also join us in this worship time. And there are many people who are living abroad also are joining us regularly in this worship time. I thank you all. God bless you. Today I would like to share a few thoughts from the gospel portion that was read to us today. <clears throat> Jesus raised a dead young man. That was a great miracle. But for John, every miracle is a sign. He used a particular Greek word, semeion. The Greek word literally means sign, like a signboard or a signpost, pointing your particular uh, direction, uh, showing us the way to your particular town or city. But 
on the same time, we can also uh, think of the signboard on each uh, roads, each road and street. Okay, this is such and such street. Yes, miracle is a sign. What does it mean? Primarily, it's a sign that God's kingdom, God's rule, God's reigning has come into this world. And at the same time for John, it's not just the miracle that took place 2,000 years ago. For John, it is repeatable in similar circumstances, in similar ways. In other words, Jesus, who performed the miracle, can do it again and again in different ways. Mark the phrase, in different ways. Let me uh, share with you a true testimony about a person who is called Johnny Spence, Spence. Johnny Spence. He lived in States. He was a golf pro by profession. Okay? And he was too good at it. And he earned a lot by playing golf. He played with uh, governors and mayors, uh, earned a lot. But he got addicted to drugs, alcohol, and he went away, went astray, I would say. <clears throat> Even though he was born in a Christian, good Christian family, his mother always insisted him to go to the church regularly on Sundays. But his attraction towards the game, the golf, made him to play on Sundays too and not going to the church. It all started with that and he became an invalid, invalid person because he was addicted to drug. And one particular point, he, want, he wanted to commit suicide. And people brought him to the hospital. He was just a skeleton. Okay. And he couldn't walk. He can't even hold uh, a glass of water in his uh, hands. He cannot walk unless people help him. And he was completely addicted. At the hospital, the nurses and the doctors were talking with each other. And the doctor said... His report says, blind in one eye, an alcoholic, a drug addict, indignant, an atom suicide. When the doctor read it, the nurse said, why this fellow wanted to commit suicide? With his health condition, if he remains in the bed, he will die soon. Why does he have to commit suicide? Such was his condition. Yes, the doctor said, yes, he won't last through the night, so let's call the chaplain. The chaplain came, looked at him. Then Johnny knew that the chaplain has come to pray for him. And first he objected, no, I don't want any prayer. But the chaplain insisted and suddenly he knelt down, held the hands of Johnny and started praying. Ask God to forgive him and revive him. And after the prayer, he got up and said, Johnny, I somehow feel that you will become all right. You also continue to pray. And he left. Then, he wanted to hold on to God. And there was a guard <coughs> at the entrance. He also looked at him. Yes, why don't you pray? Then Johnny wanted to get down from the bed and go to the window. The God wanted to help him. He said, no, let me do it on my own. He went towards the window, looked at the sky and turned towards the God. Will you mind if I prayed loudly? The God said, no, you do it. And with a loud voice, he prayed. 
Oh Jesus, I commit my life in your loving hands. If you give me strength, I want to show myself as a good person to my mother. That's all I want you to do. Probably after that, I leave everything in your hands. If I recover, I will serve you. Then slowly he came back to his bed and lay down. And after next day, next day, the nurse nurse came and wanted to give him an injection, a drug that in a small amount to make him normal. And Johnny said, "No, I don't want that." And the nurse was amazed, and he said, "I committed my life to Jesus. God will help me." so he denied taking drugs not the medicine the drug that will uh, it's an ad, uh, for which he had been addicted to so they wanted to give him small amount to be uh, normal <clears throat> but he said no then slowly he got recovered and one day the chaplain asked him to come to the chapel and there he met a person whom he trained he was a coach and the other hen- person he called henry uh, was a, a learner and he committed his life to jesus and when he asked people to commit johnny also committed himself he quickly recovered gone home and started sharing his testimony and henry who led him to Jesus Christ was converted by Billy Graham Dr Billy Graham so once uh, Dr Billy Graham asked him to come on the stage and bear witness dear brothers and sisters in Christ god can raise even a person who is about to die now look at this passage we learn many things in this passage let me briefly share with you the wonderful qualities of jesus christ first and foremost that i would like to share with you is that jesus's perspective of you and me is completely different jesus jesus looked at the lady and the emotion that is described in the gospel is that compassion compassion is always um, associated with motherly love motherly love towards her own child so jesus had compassion because he understood the situation of the woman as luke puts it he was the only son her husband died so she was all alone in this world even though there were many people they won't be able to help her all the time so jesus understood her situation dear brothers and sisters in christ as you sit at home and watch this telecast never never forget that even now jesus is looking at you he knows who you are he knows what's going on in your mind god can look into our innermost being what's going on in our heart in our mind he knows everything about us then we see jesus christ not simply having some emotional feeling and the emotion and just uh, go away from the place jesus intervened in her life asked her not to weep yes a god is a loving god who always like to wipe our tears as we read in revelation chapter 7 no oh, god wiped away all the tears okay the same way even now as we face some trouble in this world when tears roll down on our cheeks never forget jesus is there beside you 
wiping, ready to wipe your tears. He said, don't cry, don't weep. And he went and touched the bear and made him to come alive. And there was a great joy. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the same Lord is with us. They said, God has visited us. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. Yes, God is visiting us every day, every minute. So be cheerful and glorify the Lord forever and ever. Let's close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, we once again come to you and thank you for enabling us to gather in our different homes and participate in this worship time. Lord, you performed that miracle 2,000 years ago and you are the same Lord. You continue to do miracles even in our personal lives, O oh Lord. Yes, Master, as the psalmist puts it, even though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Why? You are always with us. You are always with us, O oh Lord. You be with us and strengthen us. You lead us. Wherever you lead us, give us the mind to follow you. Yes, we don't know what lies in the future, but we know you are holding our future. Yes, Master. Particularly, when we have opened the schools and colleges, Lord, we humbly ask you to be with our teachers and working staff and above all the students. Lord, protect them, strengthen them and uphold them. Yes, Master, you're always there to give us life. You don't want young people to die as we had seen in this uh, beautiful gospel portion. Yes, Lord, we also remember many young people who die at the young age because of various reasons, probably because of sickness or addiction and because they are used by the wicked people. O oh Lord, we commit all the young people into your loving hands, O oh Lord. Strengthen them, uphold them, help them to hold on to you and lead a good, good life. O oh Lord, we thank you for this blessed time. Continue to be with us and uphold us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dearly beloved, on behalf of you and on behalf of St. Matthias' family, I greet and wish God's blessing upon all those who are celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. 
May the Lord be with you and bless you and uphold you and enable you to celebrate many more happy birthdays and wedding anniversaries. God bless you. Let's pray. Loving God, we once again come to you and thank you for enabling us to participate in this worship time. Oh Lord, we thank you for your protection and we thank you for guiding our leaders, helping them to take the right measures in this time of pandemic. Oh Lord, we place those who are celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week bless them and uphold them let thy presence be with them always o oh lord enable them to celebrate many more happy birthdays and many more wedding anniversaries o oh lord we place our churches and our leaders lord continue to be with them and uphold them we also pray for the missionaries we pray for the senior citizens lord we also commit those who are getting married in this month Lord continue to be with them uphold them and strengthen them we thank you for this worship time continue to be with us and bless our families we place all our personal needs as well as our family needs at thy feet you know them all no secret is hidden from you o oh lord we humbly ask you to fulfill the needs and bless our future plans In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let us say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us and with our families now and always. Amen. Let us once again glorify the Lord by singing the closing hymn.